I've got the starting of what looks like two very similar uh, circuit schematics. They're not complete though, and they're going to be different as soon as I do complete them. I'm actually going to add a little bit of illustration to the one on the left first here. And if you've spent any time, oh, I guess we're in grade 11. But the grade 12s in chemistry start talking about these things called electrochemical cells. Did you draw that? Yep. Draw along with me. And if you've played around with, you ever seen these potato clocks? Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen the potato clock or played with a potato clock, or if you take grade 12 chemistry, what you'll find is that if you take two different metals and you stick them into anything with, with a, an acid composition, these two metals will, will have a reaction through the, the medium that they get stuck into so that electricity starts to flow. And there's good pairings, that, there's better pairings and not so good pairings of metals that cause this to happen. That's a chemical reaction. We'll leave that for the chemists. But the, the net reaction is that when these two get put into, let's say, just a beaker, of electrolyte, and maybe you talked about this in grade nine as well. Some teachers get into this, some don't. But when you put them into a, a beaker of electrolyte, typically an acid, current flows from one electrode to another. And really, this is the knockdown simple explanation of what one of your batteries you buy at the store is. Of course, there's some engineering that goes into batteries to make them very efficient and very, very long lasting. But this is the idea. The basic idea is you stick two different kinds of metal into an acidic electrolyte, electricity flows, things go, everyone's happy. Okay? The thing is, because it's a chemical reaction and electrons are really getting transferred from one electrode to an ele another electrode by an electromotive force, the electrons only flow, or sorry, I should say current, only flows in one direction. Because as we all know, chemical reactions are notoriously hard to reverse. Okay? So the electrons are getting pushed in one direction. What type of current is this? And some people know some types of current. Some alphabet letters that, that describe current. I heard it whispered. DC. DC, he's got it. This is what we call direct current. DC current. Direct just means it flows directly in one direction. Okay, So it's DC current. And a, an electrochemical reaction is a great way to produce DC current. Now, there's mechanical ways to do it as well, but an electrochemical reaction is a very straightforward way to talk about it. Okay? You can use some things called the commutators, and you can use them to produce a DC current using rotating generators, but I don't want to go down that pathway right now. This is a great one that we can be very familiar with, or will be in the next year or so if you follow through with the chemistry. Okay? This guy over here, I want to talk about how its current might be produced. Now, it could be that I have a series of magnets, or a few magnets, and I have some sort of a paddle wheel, and the paddle wheel has wires in it that are in coils, and so this paddle wheel might have the paddles that are, that are around its perimeter, and water may well pour down and splash on this paddle wheel, Whee! and there's droplets of water going in all directions, but this water roils down and spins this paddle wheel, and the paddle wheel with the wires in the form of electromagnetic coils goes past magnets, and as these wires go past the magnets, as they approach the magnets, electrons get pulled one way within the wires. And as they go away from the magnets, the electrons <coughs> get pulled the other way within the wires. And it's, an, it's called a, an electromagnetic generator, and again, we will talk about it at a later date, but the bare bones basics that you need to know at this point is that as the coils go past the magnets, as they approach the magnets, the electrons within the wires get pulled one way, electromagnetic force. And as they go away from the magnet, as they spin past the magnets, the electrons within the conductors get pulled the other way. And so successively, as these, and I'll just connect my circuit to the, to the paddle wheel, as this wheel <coughs> spins around, current sometimes is going this way, and sometimes it's going this way, depending on whether the coils are individually going either towards a magnet or away from a magnet as they rotate in this paddle wheel. Okay? And really this type of paddle wheel design is, you know, I know I'm oversimplifying and you know that too, but when you go to Niagara Falls, and some of you have been on the grade 9 field trip to Niagara Falls, in fact I know because I, I went on a field trip where some of you were there, um, you saw the great big turbines. 
and the turbines spin, and they do this, okay? Always zipping the electrons back and forth within the wires. And that's what they're doing right up to the wires within our house. And if, even if you've never been to the, one of the nuclear plants around, the nuclear plants work in a very similar way, but instead of water pouring down, it's steam firing past a, a turbine. Okay, so there's, there's all these turbine-y type things, even in a coal plant. Imagine a coal plant is something like a giant kettle furnace. And you've got this kettle that's boiling and firing off steam that really, at the end of the day, kind of just spins paddle wheels. Really, all these paddle wheels all around, it's not such a, a dead technology. Paddle wheel technology is alive and well and powering this room right now. Okay? It's, it's great. But at the end of the day, the electrons are zipping back and forth in the wires. And we call this, anybody know what it's called? Alternating current, or for short, AC. Okay? And at some point in, in the past, some brilliant band decided to name their, their band after themselves. And that sort of the, the story is they got ready for a concert. And uh, this is, this, this is the, the, maybe the myth that, maybe it's a myth, maybe it's true. They were getting ready for a concert one day, and somebody said, you're on in five minutes, what's the name of your band? They, they didn't have a good name, and they looked down at their amp, and that's what was printed on their amp. Perfect. Branded. Make the t-shirt. Okay? ACDC, though. Anyway, DC current. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Let's pretend. I want to try and graph this. And if I have a graph, and don't worry, we're not doing a whole lot of graphs. Don't cry. If you're prone to tears, it's going to be OK. Positive axis, negative axis. We're going to measure current. And it's, no, thank you. And as time goes by, as time goes by, if you're in a direct current scenario, what should be true about the current? Should it always be going in the same direction or should it change directions? Yeah, always, we're going to say it always has a positive current and it's constant in magnitude. Now, if this paddle wheel scenario is the case for our circuit, is the, is the uh, amplitude always going to be positive? Sometimes positive, sometimes negative. And what's more, if the electrons have to slow down to turn around and go back the other way, is it always going to be the same amplitude? Uh-uh. So sometimes it'll be positive, sometimes it'll be negative, and in between, these electrons are going to have to slow down to turn around. So you get a current flow that looks more like this. Now there's some things that you can do to either make use of this alternating current, and there is, there is something useful about this in terms of making motors that run on AC current, or if you really need to make DC current out of AC current, there are, are uh, apparatuses you can devise or buy to turn mm -hmm. AC current into DC current. Again, it involves having a, a commutator at your disposal, and I can show you a, a model of that afterwards. But you can turn AC current into DC current, you can turn DC current into AC current, but sometimes it's just useful to have AC current. And for us, it's really just fairly efficient to be able to transfer AC current around the, the country because uh, we have a fairly large country and you can use step up and step down transformers to increase the voltage and decrease the voltage. Now, that's not where we're at now, but it is very useful to have alternating current for a few reasons. 